In this video, I'm going to derive the Bernoulli equation, which describes the conservation of energy along a streamline in a fluid in a steady state. Consider a control volume formed by a stream tube in a field of ideal fluid flow. We will assume that the flow is not horizontal or vertical so as to keep our derivation general. Let us put in a datum level from which the vertical distance is calculated. We will measure our endpoints relative to that datum. Let the direction of flow be denoted S. And let the cross-sectional area of the stream tube be dA, its length dS, and the difference in elevation between its ends be dz. The forces acting on the stream tube are pressure forces and the gravity force. If we have a pressure P on the left-hand cross-section, then the pressure of the right-hand cross-section will be P plus dP dS dS by the chain rule. And then we have the weight of the fluid in the stream tube, W. If we look at the forces in the flow direction S, we have pressure forces, which are the pressures times the area dA, and of course we must take account of direction, hence the second term is negative. And we have the component of the gravity force in the s direction, which is minus w sine theta, where theta is the angle between the s axis and the horizontal. Now we apply Newton's second law of motion, which states that force equals mass times acceleration. We've already worked out the sum of the forces here, so we equate that to rho dSdA times du dt, where u is the velocity in the s direction. Let's unravel this. First, we note that the pDa terms cancel each other out. Now, we know that the weight of the fluid in the stream tube w equals rho g ds dA, and that sine theta equals dz by ds. We also know from the chain rule that du by dt can be written as partial du dt plus du ds ds dt. And finally, u is the velocity in the s direction, hence ds by dt equals u. Substituting all those, we have this equation. Now, if we divide throughout by rho ds by dA, we have this equation. This equation is called the Euler equation of motion along a streamline for an ideal fluid. For steady flow along a streamline, the time derivative term disappears, and we have this variation on the Euler equation. Rearranging this, we have, if we look at this, we can see that all the derivatives are in the direction of flow, i.e. along the streamline, the s-axis. Thus, we can write this in the form, and thus, along the streamline, we can deduce that p over rho g plus z plus u squared over 2g is constant. This is known as the Bernoulli equation, and it describes conservation of energy along a streamline. Let's take a look at the different terms in the equation. The first term, P over rho g, is referred to as the pressure head, and is the pressure energy per unit weight, or work done. Note that this is the same as what we simply call the head in hydrostatics. The second term is the elevation z relative to our datum and is referred to as the potential head because it relates to potential energy. And the third term, u squared over 2g, is called the velocity head and is the kinetic energy per unit weight. When we look at two cross sections, 1 and 2, 
we write the Bernoulli equation in the form shown here. Let's check the units of these three terms to satisfy ourselves that they are consistent. The first term, the pressure head, has units of pascals divided by units of density, kilograms per metre cubed, and units of acceleration due to gravity, metres per second squared. Now pascals can be reduced to newtons per metre squared, and these metre squareds on the bottom cancel out, and newtons reduced to kilogram metres per second squared. So once we work that through, the units reduce to metres. The second term, the potential head, is an elevation, so that just has units of metres. And the third term, the velocity head, has units of metres per second all squared, divided by units of acceleration, metres per second squared, which again reduces to metres. So we can see that the terms are consistent with units of metres throughout. It is worth noting that this can be interpreted as energy per unit weight. Let's have a quick look at that. The units of energy per unit weight are joules per newton. Now one joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared and a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. So again this reduces to meters as we might expect. The terms in the Bernoulli equation are often represented graphically using energy lines as shown here. The line at the top represents the total energy and is simply referred to as the energy line. The line formed by the sum of the first two terms is called the hydraulic grade line or piezometric line. The elevation z always has to be measured relative to some datum. In the example shown here, energy is conserved and so the energy line is horizontal. So, for example, if we look at flow in a horizontal pipe and assume that there are no energy losses, we get an energy diagram like this. In practice, the terms in the Bernoulli equation can be used as a means of calculating the pressure and the velocity in a pipe, as shown here. A piezometer is used to calculate the pressure head, and a pitot tube can be used to measure the total energy. In channel flow, the hydraulic grade line coincides with the water surface which is what we might expect from hydrostatics because we know that the hydrostatic head equals P over rho g. In this example we have a smooth channel and no energy loss. In practice we have energy losses and these are taken account of by adding a loss term delta E to the right hand side of the equation. This results in the energy line having a slope as shown here. This modified form of the Bernoulli equation is usually referred to as the corrected Bernoulli equation. The loss term takes into account energy spent in overcoming the friction resistance, continuous losses, or resistance due to factors such as changes in cross sections or valves, the local losses. To summarise then, we derived first the Euler equation of motion along a streamline for an ideal fluid. In the steady state case, we saw that this simplified to the Bernoulli equation, which has units of energy per unit weight, or metres. Finally, we saw that we can take account of energy losses by writing the equation in the corrected form shown here, which has the delta E term on the right hand side.